What would happen if you went to the gym for the first time ever and you sat down on the bench press and tried to bench press like a 200 pound barbell? But as you laid there and tried to get it off the rack, you realized that you couldn't move it, that it was just too heavy. Would you say to yourself, well, I guess I'm not a gym person. I can't do the gym and just leave, walk out the door? Or would you say, well, I don't have the strength for that yet. So I am going to start with something lighter and I'm going to build my strength. We see our physical health, our physical strength and abilities as something that is built, something that we have to show up and work on and intentionally do and push ourselves a little bit every time in order to build that strength. But then when it comes to our own mental strength, we think either you got it or you don't. But here's the thing. Mental strength is something that is built just like our physical strength. And it comes about through a series of intentional practices and exercises and mental habits that we work on, that we build and we grow. So in this talk today, I am going to teach you a mental strength building exercise of learning how to have a growth mindset. This is one of the keys to building our mental strength because the opposite of a growth mindset is a fixed mindset. And I am guessing that if you are struggling with feeling solid and secure and able to handle what life has for you, being able to move through challenges and difficulties, failures and setbacks, that this is something that is really hard for you, then you are probably in a fixed mindset. It's not right or wrong. It's not good or bad. It just is. And so there's no point in judging ourselves for us, uh, judging ourselves for where we're at. We are going to learn better so that we can do better and have better and live better. Yeah? Here we go. But first, if you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below if you are back again. Always good to have you. My name is Julia Christina and I'm a registered clinical therapist researcher, a coach, and a speaker, and I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And becoming more mentally strong doesn't mean that nothing ever hurts us, bothers us, or impacts us. It's like going to the gym. If you are lifting weights, if you are using your body, if you are putting yourself in a bit of discomfort as you show up and do the work, as you show up at the gym and participate in being in the gym, there are going to be some things that are going to be hard. There are going to be some things that are going to challenge you, that are going to be difficult, that are going to maybe even cause some discomfort. But how you choose to engage with that and interact with that and deal with that, that is going to be the difference. Same thing for our own lives. There are going to be things that upset us, that we find challenging, that throw us off, that impact us, that hurt us, that frustrate us. That is part of being human is the capacity and the ability to experience all these different human emotions. Mental strength is not about not feeling any difficult emotions. It's about what do we do with it? when they do show up? How do we deal with ourselves and with those emotions when they do happen? Because they are going to. So don't be mistaken in thinking that mental strength is about numbing, avoiding, repressing, just like never letting anything impact you ever. It is absolutely not. And that's good news because it is not possible to naturally (laughs) prevent ourselves from feeling any difficult feelings. So moving into this growth mindset, how do we do that and what does it mean? A growth mindset is essential for developing mental strength. It is that belief or that perspective that our abilities, our intelligence, our well-being, and even our mental health is not set in stone. It's not entirely innate 
and it is something that people can develop. So when going through life, not thinking, well, this is just the way that I am and there's nothing that I can do about it, that would be more of a fixed mindset. Yes, a growth mindset still understands that each individual comes with different inherent strengths, traits, qualities, but that becoming successful, moving forward, getting what and where you want in life comes from dedication, showing up, doing the work, and being consistent. That no matter where the starting line is that you are beginning from, a growth mindset understands that people are coming from different starting lines, that some people are further ahead. They do have some things more naturally in some ways, whereas you might be further ahead and have some things more naturally in other ways. But everyone has the capacity to move forward. Everyone has the capacity to metaphorically run in this race and knowing that the race isn't against anyone else, but it is with and for ourselves. In a growth mindset, failures and setbacks are not dead ends. They are stepping stones. They are an essential part of the process to learn, to grow, to move forward. You think about babies. Around the one year mark when most children, babies, start to learn to walk. When they start walking, they don't teeter and totter and wobble and fall down and think, well, I guess I can't walk. That's it. I'm just not meant to walk because I can't do it. I tried. It didn't work. And I guess that's it for me. They don't even think about not getting back up, even though they might get frustrated. They might feel discouraged. They might cry. They try again and they keep trying and they keep getting back up until they get it. But it's interesting how so many of us as adults, we fall down once and we're like, well, I guess I don't have what it takes. I guess I'm not good enough. I guess I'm not smart enough or capable enough or normal enough or whatever that is that I tell myself that I'm not enough in order to have this, achieve this, accomplish this, feel like this, think like this, go through life like this, love like this, relate like this, handle things like this? How many labels have you put on yourself saying, this is just the way that I am. There's nothing that I can do. I guess I just have to give up and not even bother trying. Why even bother starting in the first place? There's no point. Growth mindset people see failure as an opportunity to learn. Growth mindset people see setbacks as something to figure out and then get back up and try again or try it differently or try something better. People with fixed mindsets believe that someone's talent, their intelligence, their abilities, their likeliness to succeed, or even their mental well being is something that is fixed, that cannot change. Well, that person is just naturally easygoing. That person is just naturally talented. That person is just naturally confident. That person just naturally is able to take things in stride. That person just naturally doesn't take things personally. That person just naturally doesn't let things ruffle them or upset them or trigger them. But not me. I'm not like that. This is how I am. I'm just naturally a stressed out person, an anxious person, a depressed person, an emotionally unstable person, a messed up person, a not good enough person, a talentless person, and an ability less, less person. What is it that you have told yourself? Well, other people can have that. Other people are allowed to be that or feel that or achieve that or accomplish that or experience that because that's just who they are, but I can't because that's not who I am. How often have you claimed something for yourself that is keeping you set back, that is keeping you stuck? 
What are the consequences of thinking that your intelligence or your personality or your mental, your emotional strength or well-being or your wellness in general is something that you are stuck with versus something that you can develop, something that you can grow, something that you can work at and move forward with, that you can be successful with, that you can have. Your view of yourself determines so much more than many of us realize. If you have the thoughts that this is who I am and nothing can be changed, then you are not going to take action. You are not going to try. You are going to get stuck in that ego state of not even bothering to try because you have this idea or this thought, there's nothing that I can do. It is fixed. This is just the way that it, it, it is, or just this is just the way that I am. Or you're going to get stuck in another ego state that causes you to go around life trying to please and perfect and perform and prove because you're trying to be this version of yourself that you don't feel like you are on the inside. So you're kind of trying to fake it on the outside because you feel inferior or like a failure on the inside. So you think your only option is to pretend. There is a study done in a Chicago high school where students had a certain number of courses that they needed to graduate. And if they didn't pass a course, instead of getting a, you failed, you can't do it, you're not moving on, they got the reply of not yet. Instead of saying, you're either a success or a failure based on whether you pass all of these courses and move on to the next stage or not. It was either you've now done what you needed to do to move on or not yet. People with a growth mindset believe that if they are struggling with something, that struggle is not a roadblock. That struggle is not set in stone. That struggle means that they have something to work at. They have some skills to develop. They've got some work to do. They've got something they need to be focusing on and actions they need to be taking. Whereas people with the opposite belief, with that fixed mindset, believe that who they are and what they are and what they can do, what they're allowed to have, what they're capable of is fixed. It is set in stone. It won't change and nothing will change no matter how hard they try, which then becomes the self-fulfilling prophecy. Because if you think that no matter what I do, this is just the way that I am. This is just the amount that I'm allowed to be successful or move forward or have what I want in life, then you're not going to try. And if you don't try, then you get to be right because you get to confirm that thought that I can't have that because you didn't try. And if you don't try, you don't have it. And because you don't have it, you tell yourself you can't have it. So you don't try. Do you see how that cycle works? But if we get out of that cycle and into the, I'm going to go for it. I have skills and talents and abilities that I can learn. I have ways that I can grow. I'm going to show up at the gym and I'm not going to go for the 200 pound barbell on my first shot. And if I can't lift it that first time, I'm not going to call myself a failure and a pathetic loser who can't do gym <laughs> and leave. I'm going to go over to the dumbbells on the rack and I'm going to pick up the five pound ones and I'm going to do some rep reps with those. And I'm going to allow myself to be successful with that and try that. And then I'm going to try something else. I'm going to move up in weight. I'm going to try a different exercise. I'm going to focus on a different muscle group and I'm going to let myself develop and grow and move forward. So now the question that I want to ask to you that I want to invite you to ask yourself and you can share in the comment section below if you feel comfortable. Where have I been telling myself that I'm stuck, that I can't do it, that I don't have what it takes, that this is just the way that I am? and there's nothing I can do about it. How are those thoughts serving you? Are they keeping you stuck? Are they preventing you from trying? 
are they stopping you from showing yourself that you might be and actually likely are wrong about yourself? What would it be like to practice some different thoughts? If they are not serving you, what would it be like to try a different thought? What would it be like to tell yourself, maybe I can, or more than that, I am going to. And if I come across failure, struggle, or setback, I'm not gonna tell myself I can't. I'm gonna remind myself not yet. And now I just need to figure out a different way of how. I need to keep going. I need to get back up. I need to try again, or I need to try something different. I have some actions I need to take and I have some decisions I need to make because I can and I will. If you're struggling to trust that you can or you will, then you probably are struggling to trust yourself, to feel good about yourself, to feel solid and secure in who you are. And if that is the case for you, I have a download for you. It's called The Simple Steps to Self-Trust, and that is going to walk you through the basics of building a strong, solid, secure relationship with yourself, because every strong, solid, secure relationship starts with a strong, solid, secure relationship with trust. So learning to trust yourself, this guide is going to show you how. Make sure you grab that. You can get more information about my membership community, The Shift Society, also in the description below. And let me know, can you? Will you? I wanna hear. Until next time, take good care of yourselves. Take good care of those around you. Bye for now.